So Joe Manchin has screwed President Joe Biden again. Should we as Democrats just give up now? Let's talk about today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So President Biden had nominated Sarah Bloom Raskin for a position in the Federal Reserve, essentially as the primary regulator of banks. Now, Chairman Jerome Powell had made it very clear that that's not really something he views as his area of concern. As part of the reason, for example, that Elizabeth Warren was opposed to his renomination. Nevertheless, it became pretty clear pretty quickly that Jerome Powell was not only the choice of most Democrats, but also most Republicans. And it seemed like President Biden should keep his powder dry for another battle, especially given the fact that many Democrats, myself included, are in agreement that overall Jerome Powell has been a pretty solid chair of the Federal Reserve. In fact, if anything, he deserves a lot of credit for standing up to President Biden and doing what he felt was in the interests of the American economy rather than what Donald Trump wanted to improve his political prospects. It was exciting, though, when Randall Quarles announced that he was not going to seek renomination to the Federal Reserve and was going to resign to go into private practice. He's been actually in the position as the Federal Reserve's vice chair for supervision, essentially the key position responsible for regulating the banks. Now, I don't think I need to say that most of us feel he hasn't done a particularly good job. And he's been known as a Republican to be more than a little bit friendly to the banks he's supposed to be regulating. So our hope was with the nomination of Sarah Bloom Raskin, who's made it clear that she believes that banks need stronger regulations, that this was an opportunity for us to make some progress for consumers. What's more is that Raskin had also indicated the fact that she believes the Federal Reserve can actually play a role in addressing climate change. She believes she can essentially hold banks to account for making investments that would increase America's carbon footprint. So needless to say, progressives like myself were very excited about her nomination, really praised President Biden for making it. And given the fact that she has such strong progressive credentials, you can imagine all the Republicans were directly opposed to her. And they went all out attacking her, accusing her of using her influence to essentially line her own pockets. Well, despite the fact that really there's not much evidence to support those allegations, Manchin announced that he is not going to support her nomination, which basically doomed it. Because if all the Republicans are opposed to it, then literally we needed every single Democrat to vote in favor of her nomination to get it passed. What's more is she was one of five nominations to the Federal Reserve that President Biden had submitted, including Jerome Powell's nomination. And literally her nomination was holding up the entire package of nominations. So Manchin's announcement specifically led to Raskin withdrawing her nomination and President Biden accepting that withdrawal, which is a real shame as far as us progressives are concerned. Manchin, for his part, claims the reason that he decided to oppose her nomination was because of her position on fossil fuels. Of course, he is the senator from ExxonMobil and coal country, from what I can tell. And even despite the fact that the miners' union in his home state of West Virginia have urged him to support climate change measures in the Build Back Better bill, he's been opposed to them, probably because he cares more about the fat cats in mining than he does about the people working in them. Well, if this makes you angry at Joe Manchin, join the club. This comes on top of Joe Manchin essentially killing the reauthorization of the dependent child tax credit, which was putting money in the pockets of families and dramatically reduced childhood poverty in America. As a result of the ending of the child credit, 3.7 million have children have fallen into poverty, an increase in 41% of children in poverty. I can go on with the reasons you should be angry at Joe Manchin, but none of this matters at this point. I can already hear some of my fellow progressive Democrats arguing that President Biden hasn't done enough to force Joe Manchin to vote along his way. Don't you think Biden wanted him to vote this way? Biden did everything he could to try to push through the Build Back Better bill. And he came out in favor of changing the filibuster so that they could pass voting rights legislation, something else that Joe Manchin screwed over. And just the fact that he nominated Raskin and stood behind her and fought for her just shows that he's really been a surprisingly progressive president and that we as Democrats should enthusiastically stand behind him. Should we be angry at Joe Manchin? Yes. But remember that things could get worse. If we didn't have Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, the other problem child of the Democratic caucus, then Mitch McConnell would be 
the majority leader. And if you think that President Biden would be getting anything done, well, you're kidding yourself. We wouldn't be approving any judges, and I wouldn't be surprised if we defaulted on our debt by now. So don't kid yourself. Things could get worse. So what's the solution to this problem? How can you deal with your anger? Well, I'll tell you exactly what you should do with your anger. You should elect more Democrats in 2022. I mean, if we elect just two more Democratic U.S. senators and keep all the ones who are currently in office, then Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema will be irrelevant. I mean, I think it's worth remembering that 48 out of 50 Democrats in the Senate voted to change the filibuster to pass voting rights legislation and supported the Build Back Better bill and wanted to continue the dependent child tax credit and wanted to appoint Sarah Bloom Raskin to the Fed. I mean, need I go on? All we need are two more votes and it's definitely doable. We have races in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin to name two that our state's President Biden won where the Republican incumbent is either retiring or they have a very weak one, and we have the potential to win those seats. And what's more is our candidates who are running for re-election this year are all very, very strong. Finally, we did much better in redistricting than people expected. So there's a chance we could hold on to the House. So the point is, we shouldn't give up now. Now is the time to be organizing and to be enthusiastic and to get people fired up for this election later this year. If we get out there and raise the money and organize the people, then we can elect just two more U.S. senators and potentially hold on to the House and put us in a position where literally we'll be able to get our wish list done. President Biden has already shown he's in favor of it. All he needs is the support of two more U.S. senators to make it happen. And accomplishing that, frankly, falls on all of us. Well, to see more about how much President Biden has done for America, check out this video over here. We really need to be bragging as Democrats, not feeling sorry for ourselves and engaging in the circular firing squad. I'm as angry at Joe Manchin as the rest of you are, but let's face it, let's channel that anger into something positive, and that is getting enough senators elected that we're able to actually accomplish the agenda we've set for ourselves. I'll see you in that next video. In the meantime, Let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.